Okay, so let's first of all try to solve these questions from the quiz. In the quiz, there are four questions, right? The first one is, okay, we're given the limited uh, amount of the material for making the box. So we can use only 1,200 meters square materials in order to make the box, right? With open, uh, with the square base and with open top. So we need to figure out what are the dimensions of the box so that in order to make this, uh, so, so that the volume will be maximum, right? So either we can make this narrow and very high, right? Either we can make this wide or very tall, okay, small. Okay, so let us write this. So we need to maximize the volume. Let us maximize the volume, which will depend on x, something, some x. So that under the constraint, right? Under the constraint that the surface area, under the constraint, that the surface area is equal to the 1,200 meters squared, okay? So first of all, let me draw the box, okay? So this should be the box. So since the base is the square, it means that all the four sides of the base are the same, right? So this is x, this is x, and all the other two sides are all bad, right? And I can have the H also, the height of this box, right? Now let me find what is the surface area. Basically, area of the all surface, right? So what is the area of the base? It's simply x squared, right? Plus, what is the area of the one side on these sides? X multiplied to the H, right? So X multiplied to the eight, and we have to multiply this to the four because there are four sides which are the same, right? We need to either add X multiplied to the eight four times, either we can just multiply this X multiplied to the eight to the four, right? So the surface area is equal to the X multiplied to the X plus H multiplied to the X plus this H multiplied to the X for all the sides, right? So the surface area is X squared plus four X H should be equal to the 1,200, right? And what is the volume of the box? Is the area of the base multiplied to the height, right? So this will be equal to the x squared multiplied to the h. You see, so in the volume, I've got two variables, right? So if I change the x and h, it will give me a different volume, right? But since I have the constraint, I have the relation of the x squared and h, right? using the surface area. I can find the H and Q from the surface area and plug this into the volume, okay? Then the volume will depend only to one variable, to the X, okay? So let us find the H. So what is the H from Q? The H will be equal to the 1,200 minus x squared divided to the 4x, right? Okay, so now we need to plug this into the volume, then the volume will depend only on x. So this will be x squared multiplied to the 1,200 minus x squared divided to the 4x. If you divide the x squared with the x, you will have uh, x multiplied to the 1,200 minus x squared divided to the 4, right? So you need to maximize this with respect to the x, okay? So how to maximize the functions which depend on one variable x? By taking the derivative and finding the critical points and checking those critical points, right? So let me take the derivative. So derivative of the d is equal. So if it is difficult for you to take the derivative of the function in this form, you can write a slightly different form, okay? So let me multiply x to the 1,200 and divide this to the 4. What you will have? 300x, right? Let us multiply the x to the x squared and divide it to the 4. What you will have? x cubed divided to the 4, right? Okay, now let us take this derivative. What is the derivative? It is 300 minus 3 over 4 x squared, right? 
3 comes down. So if you take the derivative of the x cube, it will be 3x squared, right? So then you need to multiply this to the constant before the chain, which is 1 over 4. You understand this? The derivative of the x cube is 3x squared divided to the 4, right? Okay. So we need to equalize this to the 0 in order to find the critical point, right? So let us equalize this to the 0 and find the x, which satisfy this equation, okay? So if you find this, it will be 4 multiplied to the 300 divided to the 3, it is equal to the x squared, right? So if you divide, uh, sorry. So if you divide this, it will be 400, right? So 300 divided to the 3 is 100, multiplied to the 4 is 400. So we've got the equation, 400 is equal to the x squared, right? Then x is equal to the plus minus 20, right? Now there are two critical points. We need to figure out at which we attain the maximum, at which we attain the minimum. In order to do this, we need to do, we can do two of the tests, right? Either we define the signs of the first derivative, we find the regions where it is increasing and decreasing. Either we find out the second derivative of the v and figure out in which regions the critical uh, points are, okay? Whether the critical points are in the concave upwards regions or concave downwards regions. So let us find the second derivative of the v in order to find the concavity region, okay? So let's take the derivative g of 2 prime of x. What is the second derivative? It will be 300 is 0, right? Minus 3 over 2 multiplied to the x, right? You need to equalize this to the 0, right? And find the root. What is the root? Is 0, right? We need to put the interval. So where this function v2 prime is positive and negative. So if I put the x, for example, 1, we cannot just put here plus and minus, right? We need to test it first. Let's choose one number from here, from here, for example, 1, right? So if you plug this 1 to there, to the v2 prime of x, is it positive or negative? Negative, right? So that is why it is minus here. And this is plus here. Now, in order to define whether we attain the maximum or minimum in a different critical point, we need to plug those critical points into this interval, right? So I need to put the uh, critical point first, which is 20, which will be here, right? And the second critical point, which will be here, right? So yesterday we say that if you plug the critical point to the second derivative of the function, right? Could you please plug this in? So you will get the number, which is negative, right? So yeah, some number which is negative, right? If you plug the 20 to the second derivative and it gives you the negative value, then the function attains its local maximum at the 20, right? If the second derivative is negative at the critical point, then at this critical point, the function attains its local maximum, okay? Now, if you substitute minus 20 to the second derivative, the second derivative gives you the positive number, right? And we said yesterday, so if the function second derivative is positive at some critical point, then at this critical point, the function attains its minimum, okay? So at which point we will get the maximum volume? We will get the maximum volume. We get the maximum volume at x is equal to the 20, okay? Now, we ask, uh, we, we need to find the Maximum volume, right? We're not asked what is the dimensions of the box. So the maximum volume, it will be. So I need to plug this x into here, okay, in order to find the maximum volume. So maximum volume, which is a 20, it will be 20 in the square multiplied to the Do you see the eraser? Okay, 20 squared multiplied to 1,200 minus 20 squared divided to the 4 multiplied to the 20, right? So this is 400 mul multiplied to the 1,200 minus 400 divided to 80, right? If you divide 400 to the 80, you will have 5 here. 5 multiplied to what? To the 800. What you will get? 4,000 meter cube, okay? 
the by using 1,200 meters square material, for example, metal or plastic, you can make a box which has the maximum with so the maximum volume will be 4,000. Okay, you understand what you needed to do, right? You need to figure out what is your cost function. So we, we call this function d as the cost function usually, okay, in optimization problems. And then you need to maximize the cost function or minimize it, okay, under some constraints. Yes, yes. So this is the mo most difficult point. Let's model it, right? So the, the after you found figure out the equation and finding the maximum and minimum is technical thing. You need to do a lot of this practice and you will learn this. The most important part is how to model this, how to construct the equations, right? So in order to do this, you need to do a lot of problems. Okay? So this problem is taken from your book, just copy test. Okay? So there are a lot more problems. So just go through the exercises and try to solve them. Okay? So all of them are really interesting. So actually optimization is like one of those fields which, are, which is really interesting. This is like simple formula. If you don't know, just like raise your hand and I will tell you. There's no problem. On exam as well, good. Okay, and the second problem, we need to find the limit of sine of 5x, right? Divided to the tangent of 4x, where x goes to the 0. So if x goes to the 0, what is the limit of the sine 5x? is zero, right, because it will be sine of zero. And when x goes to the zero, the tangent of 4x also goes to the zero, right? We've got a limit which is zero by zero. We call this as indetermined limit, right? Then if we've got the limit which is indetermined, we can take the derivative of the numerator and denominator separately and find its limit when x goes to the zero. And this limit will be equal to the limit of or to, to the original limit, right? So this is equal to the limit of, so what is the derivative of the sine? So this will be cosine of 5x multiplied to the 5, right, according to this tangent. So what is the derivative of the tangent? It is 1 over cosine square of 4x multiplied to the derivative of the 4x, which is 4, right? Now, when x goes to the 0, 5x goes to the 0, so cosine of 0 is 1. Right? So when x goes to the 0, cosine square of 4x also goes to the cosine square of 0, which is also 1, right? What is left is 5 over 4. Okay? So this was the exercise 2, problem 2. Problem 3. So 1 plus 3x squared, 1 plus 3x squared minus 2x cubed. So we need to find the local maximum and minimum using the first derivative test and second derivative test, right? So first of all, we need to find the critical point. This is like no matter what, more, what method you're going to use in order to find the local maximum and local minimum, first of all, you have to find the critical point. Okay, so let me take the derivative of this function and equalize the zero, right? So it will be 6x minus 6x squared, right? So I will take out the 6s from the brackets. It will be 1 minus x. And we need to equalize this to the zero and find the point which satisfies this equation, right? So I'm basically asking you, so at which point x, f prime of x becomes zero? And x is equal to the zero and at x is equal to the one, right? So add x is equal to the 0, and add x is equal to the 1. Okay, so this is the first critical point, and this is the second critical point. Okay, now we need to define at which of these points the function attains its local minimum and local maximum. Maybe it doesn't attain its local maximum in neither of the points, right? So for example, do you remember the x cubed, right? So at the point x is equal to the 0, the uh, function like it has the horizontal tangent line, right? X cubed. Do you remember this? 
right? And if you draw the regions when the function is increasing and decreasing, it will be plus and plus, increasing and increasing, right? So at this point, the function do not reach its neither maximum, neither minimum, right? So we need to define that. So the first method is called the first derivative test, right? First derivative test. So here we need to put the points, the critical points. So this will be 0 and 1, and we need to identify the signs, right? So in order to identify the signs, you need to check, just get one number from here, from the first interval, right? So for example, t, right? Plug this t into the first derivative, f prime, right? Because we're, so this graph corresponds to the f prime of x, right? You don't put this as f, so f prime. So this is the graph of the sign of the f prime. So if you put t to here, what will be the sign of the f prime? Negative, right? So here it is minus, then it will be plus here, then it is minus here, right? The function is decreasing in this region, then increasing, then again decreasing, right? From the first derivative test, we can figure out that function attains its local maximum at local maximum at, right? It is important that I'm writing at, right? Not is. So the local maximum at x is equal to the 1, right? And local minimum at x is equal to the 0, okay? Why? Because before the 1, the function was increasing, then after 1, it is decreasing, right? It means that it, it has the local maximum. Before the 0, it was decreasing, then after the 0, it is increasing. It means that it has a local minimum here, okay? So the second derivative test is, second derivative test, so we again take the derivative from the f one more time. From this, right, from the f prime, we will get one more derivative. So f t prime of x, it is equal to the 6 minus 12x, right? So we equalize this to the 0 and find the root. So what is the root here? Is 1 over t, right? So we need to put this 1 over t here, right? And figure out the sign. Okay? If you choose one number more than 1 over t, for example, 1, right? If you plug this to the second derivative of the f, what kind of sign you will have? Either positive or negative. Negative, right? If you put 1, it will be 6 minus 12, which is minus 6, right? So here it is negative. And here it is positive, right? Now what we need to do, we need to plug into this interval the critical points, right? So could you tell, tell me where I need to put the zero? Is this bigger than one over two or smaller? Smaller, right? So I need to put here zero here, and we need to put the one to here, right? So when the, so it means that second derivative is negative when x is equal to the one, and the second derivative is positive when x is equal to the zero, okay? So we have learned previously that if the second derivative is, so f t prime of 0 is positive, therefore it has local minimum at x is equal to the 0, right? So if the second derivative is positive, then this is minimum, okay? If the second derivative is negative, then this is maximum. So if the second derivative at the point 1 is negative, therefore, it has the local maximum at x is equal to the 1, okay? So we... We've got the same result as the first derivative test, right? So this is what you needed to do, and this is what you will need to do in the exam.